Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And today I'm doing the file for one of my champion patrons. They watched a couple of other videos on how to uh, put line drawings into text. And even though the preview on the screen and everything look fine, when they went to burn it, it just didn't burn right. So today I'm going to show you my technique, which is a little different from the way other people do it. And this is going to be pretty quick, uh, but I'm going to show you everything that I did, explain to you everything that I did. So normally this would take me about four minutes to do, or actually I think the file that I already did and sent to my patron, I sent him two different versions. Uh, that one I think took me 35 minutes altogether because I did two different versions and I had to get the images and so on. So let's get started. Let's jump over into Lightburn and I'll show you what I did. So the first thing that I did, I knew I wanted to put, this was on file version number two. I wanted to put some clouds and things into the uh, text. So I went ahead and got out my tablet and I just quickly drew these out. Uh, you can also do them using the pencil tool and note edit. You can get the same results. It's just that it was quick and easy, about two minutes on the tablet. So I ran over to chat GPT and I asked chat GPT to make me this image here, this line drawing and told chat GPT that I wanted uh, a skyline view of New York City looking to the east. And that way I could have the sun rising in the background and some clouds and some birds and things like that. And this is what I got and I traced the image. And now you have to be careful. And I know there's a lot of creators out there talking about using AI for their images. And it's totally fine for your personal or commercial use if you're uh, producing products to sell. But it's not totally fine if you're doing graphics for someone else. But let's take a quick look here. And I ask chat GPT anytime I get an image from them, I ask them for a release, which they'll print out on the screen for you. And then you can even go further and put in your details and it'll, it'll fill out all the blanks. So here's what I got when I asked for the release, royalty free image use license. And uh, you can have chat GPT fill all this out. I, I, I will after this video, but this certifies that it's free for commercial and personal use and it's not subject to any copyright. However, there is a restriction on it right here. So the original AI generated images themselves may not be resold or redistributed as standalone downloadable assets. So you cannot redistribute this image. You can't give it away to somebody else unless you make substantial changes to it, which is about uh, what we're about to do right now. So now he wanted the uh, New York, New York, NYNY, filled with this graphic or this graphic cut out of it with some scene in the background. So this is what I decided to do. I'm going to come over to my text tool on the left hand side and I'm going to go ahead and type NY comma NY no space. And there is our text. Let's put this into line mode so that we can design. Then he wanted it to be 16 inches wide. So actually I should just come up here, go into inches by clicking the millimeter button, click on the I N and do 16 and press enter. And there we go. So let's go ahead and put that in the center of the screen. And uh, this is the size of his work bed. And we're going to have to shrink this just a bit in a minute and we want to make sure that uh, he's going to be able to engrave this. So the problem is that he won't be able to engrave this on the um, X axis. He's going to have to go north and south on this. Okay, it's going to have to be engraved at a 90 degree angle. Otherwise, he'll hit a hard stop on the end. And he already knows that. So we can just skip that. So now I'm going to take this image and I'm going to stretch this out so that it fits the NYNY. I'm going to stretch out that side and I'm going to stretch out this side. Just like that. 
So now that fits the NY NY. Now, here's where the problem came in from the other videos that my patron was watching was uh, doing a weld of these two. And you see that it also has to come down. Oops, wrong one. Let's grab the image and let's just get this in the right spot to begin with. That looks good right there. Okay, so now we've got what we want. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to press Control and the letter D to duplicate it. Once I've done that, it's already selected and I can pull that off. So we'll put that off to the side now because we're going to use this later. We're just using this NYNY over here as a tool to work with this image. So uh, let me just make sure that I've got the image exactly where I want it. I think I need to go, yeah, just like that. And I think that looks good right there. So now I'm going to select everything by dragging from right to left over it. And here's where, uh, if you go to the Boolean operator, I'm still going to use it. I'm going to press Control and the letter B, or I can come up here to Tools on the top left and come down to Boolean Assistant, either way. So Control and the letter B makes it easy. I'm just going to do this for now. So we do not want to uh, weld, subtract, or union, or anything like that. What we want to do is hit this intersection button right here. And that gets rid of all of the text. So now I've got just this, this part that I want. And there may be a little anomaly there, and there is. So I'm going to ungroup it. I'm just going to delete this right here. And then I'll come back and select everything and group it back together. So now I've got, oh, I didn't do that right. <laughs> we got to get select everything. Okay, there we go. We select everything, group it back together. And now we'll take the NYNY and work on it. So I want this to have a border around the outside. So I'm going to hit the offset tool over here. And the distance, I think uh, for this size, five millimeters. Oh, you know what? I'm in inches. Let's cancel that. <laughs> Let's go to millimeters up top and do the offset again. And five millimeters should be good. Yep, that's what I'm looking for right there. So I'll say OK to that. So now we've got our offset is done. We can take and select both of those. Go ahead and group those together. And now we can move this over onto the image. And now we can do some fine adjusting on the image itself. And I'm going to look at just one letter. It should be OK. And just hold Control and use my arrow key to move it over and up just a little bit. And that looks perfect right there. It's close enough. <laughs> So now, if we take and put this into fill mode, you'll see we've got what we're looking for there. But this all has to be 16 inches wide. So let's go back to inches up here. Let's select it. And let's do 15.75 because I think that's probably where he wants to be, not necessarily 16. Put that in the middle like that. And we're ready to do our decorations. So uh, this will burn fine just the way it is. We can do a preview. And you'll see that that's going to burn just fine. It's going to look great. But I wanted to add some more detail to it. So I've got a sun that I drew right here that I want to put right there. But you know what? I don't particularly like that. So let's do an offset on that of zero. And say OK. And there we go. And that's what we're going to use. We'll group that together. Actually, we didn't even need to group that because we could just pull the old one off and delete it. There we go. So now we'll take this one and move this into place. And, you know, now, now this becomes a matter of preference where you want things to be. I want the sun to be right there. The sun is rising. And then I've got my 
clouds over here. Let me grab this one. I think I want to use this one. And let's put this one into the top left corner. We'll zoom way in on this. And I can do this in line mode because it makes it easier to see. And get it right up to the edge. And that looks like the perfect, just about the perfect size right there. So there's our clouds for the left side. And I don't think I like the ones for the right side. So I'm just going to use these. Press Control and the letter D again to duplicate it. Now I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to mirror it because it's already selected from being duplicated. I'll click mirror. I'm going to move this one to the other side and we're going to resize this and rotate it so it's not going to look like that one over there. So let's zoom way in on this and start our rotate and see if we can get it to line up. It needs to rotate just a little bit more. Right about there I think looks looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So now I'll just shrink this down to size. And now we have a completely different graphic on the right side as compared to the left side. And for our final touches, I think I drew, yeah, I drew a couple of birds here. <laughs> a couple of seagulls, which New York is known for. So we'll take and put a, a seagull up here in the corner. Again, I'm going to press Control and the letter D to duplicate it. It's now selected. So I'm going to mirror it up top here. And I'm going to use my right arrow key and move it way across the screen to right about there. I'm going to hold control, move it a little slower. And that looks good right there. Now I have my other seagull here that I'm going to put up in this corner here. Same thing, control and the letter D up at the top mirror, and then right arrow this one over to here. And we'll put this one right there. And I think that's all I want to do. So we can now put this back into fill, and you'll see that there is the final product. Now we'll come in here. His speed is going to be 16,000, and uh, his power is going to be 80%. And he's going to need a 3% overscan like that. So we'll say, okay, so now here's the problem. When we preview this, you see it goes off, goes past that green line. That green line is the boundary of the laser. So this is not going to work. We could reduce the overscan, but I'm not sure that it that that would still work. So let's give it a try and see if we come in here and change the overscan to... 2% mean that might work and then we take another preview yeah it's going to be really really close no that's not going to work see how it goes past that green line so rather than go any lower than 2% what he has to do is change the scan angle he can't go left and right so we're going to change the scan angle to 90 and this will work on his machine and then preview it again and now you can see everything works perfectly. So there, those were the two issues that he was having. And the first one was that the engraving was coming out all black because he watched a couple of videos that showed him the wrong way. And even though the preview looked okay on screen, when, when these parts were welded together, it didn't come out properly. So there is the in, entire project I did do another one of the Big Apple, another template of the Big Apple for him. And uh, that is the way that I do it. So if I weren't making this video and telling you step by step what I'm doing, uh, really it's this whole project I think took me 35 minutes to do. And that was going over to chat GPT, generating the images, getting out my tablet, drawing the line drawings for the clouds and the birds and spending a whole lot of time really because some of these things can really be done very quickly but i wanted to add some details to it so turns out that he absolutely loved it he did wind up running the uh, scan at a 90 degree angle and uh, it came out absolutely perfect he was running this on the lasermatic 20. 
And the only thing that I didn't add here that I added for him was on this graphic right here. I did an offset and outward and outer shapes only and set this to zero and said okay and then put that onto that offset onto the red layer so now it will engrave all of this and then come back and cut the whole thing out and this was done in he did this in two pieces I don't have a picture of it yet, but he said it came out absolutely fantastic. The New York, New York was one piece and the comma was another. So it had a backer board on it. I think he also said that he was in the process of putting LED lights in the backer board. So great, great project, easy to do, quick and easy. So if you're having problems with other, any other videos that you've watched and you can't seem to get them work, maybe this video will help you. And we talk about things like this all the time on the Laser Makers Realm, which is a, another YouTube channel where myself and Patrick and Jeremy get together every two weeks and we do projects live. Uh, you might want to go check that out. I'll put a link down below in the description. And uh, that's about it for this video. So I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. In the heart of the bayou where the moss hangs low The hobby guy's laser is ready to blow He's got the bayou spirit and a steady hand Crafting with precision, yeah, it looks so grand Laser light, cut and fire Bayou crafts with a Cajun shine